everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Sayu, as we know, has a friend named Zion Lanza, and the friend went through a lot of stuff. And Sayu is going to talk about uh, things like here, uh, where she was watching Armchair Experts thing, and to make sure that uh, people understand what was going on. Watch the VOD! I'll be honest, I've just made, I, I've become very apathetic to a lot of things, and it really kind of sucks, because, like, it, it's my coping mechanism to just not care about a lot of I what happens, that. or a lot of what, I you know, that. negative things happen, or I feel, right, that are negative. Um, I guess it's like, the way that it is, is that I, I'm basically just taking this time, you know, this, this stream to explain exactly how I feel now, you know, how things have changed, and how things haven't changed, right? Um, the things I can stand up for myself saying, and the things I can't. Um, the reasons why it's, you know, like, if you guys see the earlier parts of the stream, I basically explained why it's unfair for people to ask me to quote-unquote move on from it. And that's because yeah, I still feel the repercussions from the stuff today, right? True, like, I still very true. lose out on making new friendships because people judge me preemptively and they just don't want to be associated with me. Or people, ju or I, like, I am still left out even though I, you know, I am ex this company as well. And I'm not technically part of that, you know? So, yeah, yeah, there's just a lot. There's a lot of it. Like, I've been backstabbed by a lot of people. I, I actually had a huge PTSD of females for a very long time because of oh, what wow. happened. And wow. it was only through meeting and making good friends like Sheena and, you know, so many other people recently that made me actually not feel PTSD anymore from them. Like, I, I've actually moved past it, but I used to I really dislike other females because I, I was very scared of them. And I knew that they would be very, very dishonest with me. And so this was just kind of like, oh. I understand that whole feeling. I understand that whole feeling. A lot of them can be dishonest. Uh, a lot of them are great, but a lot of them can be dishonest. And most of my friends growing up were guys, you know, they played video games, you know, that's what I was, I was a gamer, and yeah, so this just kind of felt like, ah. Emotional family. It happened again, kind of thing, you know, like, why couldn't you just talk? Why couldn't you just talk to me? Yeah. Why, why, why? Yeah. Uh, and same thing I feel. With another girl same there, thing I feel. who was one of Zion's, <laughs> who was someone that Zion thought she was very close to as well. And she also got backstabbed. Yeah, but a certain talked, which was even recent worse. girl as well. They talked for me. privately Backstab. and cleared up everything and explained things. And she basically told the story that got told before they talked. It was her thoughts on what happened before they even talked things through. And that's why I am angry at her. That is why. Because it's like the whole talk never happened between the two of them. And yeah. they talked privately in DMs. And oh boy, I wish it, I wish she had screenshotted that. But it was very, very long. And I really do think that's like I do not like accusing people of doing things that are bad or negative. Either for Nana I don't or like doing that Because a lot of people just make mistakes. I make mistakes. A lot of people just have bad wording. But I do not I, I do not understand why she would talk about what happened if they had already talked things through. As if they hadn't. Like it's very, very hurtful. And I think that being in the industry, for, in this space for so long, she knows the weight of her words. It's not like Kotoka, where Kotoka maybe didn't know the weight of her words and how much it would affect and hurt the person afterwards. But the other one definitely did. Oh, and then that it's is probably Pinana. Like. That's probably Pinana then. Okay. That's what I do not like. Probably Pinana then at that point. So, yes. Oh, that's fucking like, that's that's scary looking. Oh my God. Oh, oh my, oh my God. Oh, wait. <laughs> I've got this. I got this. She got this. She got this. She got this. Oh God, uh -huh. she did it. She did it. She did it. Uh-huh. Ooh, 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 even better, even better, even better. Those of you guys who are new here, um, have you have you ever seen this? Yeah. There you go. Oh God. Oh God, she did that. She did that. She wanted to play around with it. Well, that's that's fun. But yeah, it looks like it might have been Finana that did that. Uh, this clip makes broader context, doesn't help her, kind of brushes off her conclusion that she still wants to be friends with people and clear things up. Probably would be a good idea to put disclaimer somewhere in the video about it making a longer version so people can refer to the supercut. Comment about it in here, but repeated visibility. People who take her words as a reason to attack livers have issues. Exactly. Do not go attack livers, no matter what's going on, no matter what this person says, no matter what. When I see Sayu's stream clips, it always depresses me. So yeah. And here's the things that she uh, mentioned here uh, and asked for that because this can be seen as NSFW. It can be seen as, you know, basically with the cross thing, living up to the title of YouTuber Jesus. And here she has it a lot closer. Someone took a closer pic of it, of, you know, her on, on there. Um, also have a pic of that. You underwear Sayu. I missed the timing, unfortunately. Then you have the, the oh, someone did the, the wings as well. Uh, so there's some Twitch clips. And yeah, she was talking about the armchair video. She went through that whole thing. And of course, watch the VOD itself uh, because it's it's a lot of things there. She, like she talked about Niji Livers since the video covers Gen Mates. Uh, reached out to Kotoka to try to talk things possibly connect in the future. Uh, but Kotoka is a client. Simini definitely, despite in indicating the others in the Black Stream, uh, they have no otherwise talked since. Uh, and our Black Stream, Sayu says Kotoka a lot of benefit of the doubt as ESL. Uh, she doesn't give the benefit of the doubt to other Livers who have slandered her, Hex and possibly Fanana likely due to them having more experience in the industry. Regardless of Kotoka declining to talk things through, Sire enjoyed her time with Kotoka and she wishes her to, ha her to be happy. 
Sayu talked uh, another liver was close with presumably Fanana of determination to share her side of the story. But, you know, she mentioned that the person still talked negatively av- a- about her, even if the, the thing uh, was talked about. Sayu briefly mentioned about her sharing private thoughts. Uh, Nina confided in her about, you know, the, which one I'm talking about. Sayu says she cannot reach out to that person directly and privately to apologize, despite it being confirmed a month ago that Matara does not have Sayu blocked since Sayu replied to one of her tweets. To me, it feels like Matara never blocked Sayu. People assume so but has not followed, reached out, or interacted with Sayu. That's something that anybody can can desire or not desire, you know. Uh, understand why Kotoka doesn't want the PR of rekindling a relationship, friendship, at least publicly, because unfortunately she's already in a hot mess as it is. Uh, to them, it also caught with the need to con- consider as a traitor. It could be a seppuku, you know, could be really bad for them. So yeah. It could be really bad news for them. Uh, Sayu is not interested in fighting a war against Niji Sanji, but I hope there's still some way they can store information she provided in collective memory for future things. I hope so too. And I wish the best for Sayu always. And e- everyone should too, because Sayu's a-, a sweet woman. We go to Kersha, who is a VTuber who has gotten a bit of hot water over the things that she said. A lot of people don't like it. I feel that she has the right to say whatever the heck she wants, as long as it's not directly hurting someone else. And what I mean by that is that as long as it's not like directly asking for, for anybody to get hurt in any way, then she is has the right to say it and should not be uh, censored for that. But here's what's happening. Afkai has banished her basically has prevented her from from going to any and being a part of any panels i don't think she's blacklisted from actually showing up at Afkai, but from being part of any panels meet and greets that type of stuff here she goes and puts everything in kind of a collage to show what exactly they have a problem with you know the sam winning weightlifting competition lgbtq things uh dei things uh fruit farmers um pretty much things that uh, a certain group of people would not like her saying and like I said, it's horrible that you have been treated this way due to your thoughts and ideas not being what they want you to believe. Um, and we're going to go further into the actual DMs. In this case, the DMs here are, she was asking, basically slated to be on a panel that was 18 plus. And then uh, they said that you apparently be too risky to be on said panel of the off guy organizers. I'm curious what the issue is. She's, the person responds, uh, sorry about the back and forth. Usually asked to approve any co-panelists ahead of time, but this case fell through the cracks. So they weren't going to allow her to do it anyways. From what it looks like. I hope you understand that given the current tumultuous state of VTubing, we would like to avoid collaboration with somewhat polarizing. So because she's polarizing. And it says, do not understand that I personally have no issues being uh, getting sponsors short or long term with both products and games. I do not promote hateful rhetoric and I'm genuinely surprised that I would be blacklisted from your convention. It feels more like a single person who dislikes me has poisoned the well. You guys have hosted VTubers who have participated in harassment campaigns, which leaves me even more confused as to what the content would be a problem. I can assure you that no single person would be have the ability to have such a call, although it seems that they have. Uh, please understand we are an all-volunteer run event. Your name's coming up with a number of our staff un- and making it uncomfortable comfortable we value our team a lot and do not want to cause issues that close the convention this close to the convention that's why the executive team decided to have it against you participate in the panel there's not blacklisting you're still free to attend or participate in other ways but she's blacklisted from panels so that's still blacklisting in a way sorry for the small amount of information i think people are accusing me of making them uncomfortable i have the right to know what i have said or done to cause that especially if it's affecting my ability to participate in panels and having an effect on my friends as well and again you have a platform VTubers who actually participate in harassment, which is Molina VT, I believe. Uh, something, Marina VT, Marina VT. Something I have never done, so I don't understand the issue of my presence. Also, say this is blacklisting is disingenuous. You're telling me I'm not allowed to participate in panels, which is blacklisting. I haven't heard back from you guys today, and I would like to be able to re- rectify the problem if there's possible. However, if left no other option, I'll be speaking about this publicly. Hello, this is Lysander, and I go to the next one right here, where the, uh, this, I'm director of this year's Ofkai, and you're open... I'd like to talk about it more in depth. I'll try to give you as much information as I can about it, but in many guess, it's complicated. Uh, my Discord tag is Lysand. If you're okay with continuing the convo there, spare our social media team. And right here, she says, I guess I'll start with this. And this was Kersha saying. Uh, no, it looks... Uh, oh, no. Uh, yes, they were a part of our event last year. It's uh, This is actually Lysander. Uh, but it was before everything went down. We chose this year not to continue to work with them. They, we aren't all knowing of each other it's in person. We work and we try to do some basic screening sometimes. Some things don't get found. Our organization is made up of all volunteers from pretty much every background you can think of. No one is getting paid. Uh, so a lot of difficulties in managing 100 plus people, making sure our team feels comfortable giving up their free time to help us. We have members on our staff who are fans of you and your work and members who are not. I think it's fair to say that you are a bit controversial with a lot of your takes, especially if your staff based in California. 
Uh, during pitch phase, we talked about the panelists, about topic and people they want to work with and clear it with our staff first. And in this case, we didn't know till everything was said was already in motion last week. Uh, there are a lot more volunteers involved in working either directly or indirectly with every guest and panelist. And it isn't fair for us to ask for them to do something they are not comfortable with. We are in a difficult spot in managing guests, panelists, staff, industries, expectations, and balancing them all. So uh, that's what led us to what you don't participate in the panel. We did get a list of screenshots of things that made staff uncomfortable. If you do wish to see some of them. And it says, this indeed is a fair assessment. I would like to think while I have a stark contrast, to typical Cali person, I do not peddle in hateful rhetoric towards people. If people with C beliefs would be okay. I do not see why I shouldn't even, uh, why I shouldn't be even if they disagree, you know, basically saying that she should still be there. Even if they disagree with my position, there are a lot of volunteers involved. It says, excuse my ignorance over how cons are run. I have only done a meet and greet at WeebCon, and I'm setting up something with y YumaCon in the future. But the people who would be uncomfortable with me, could they simply just not work with the specific panel I was set to be on? Uh, I was indeed like to see these. You say mostly tweets. So I'm interested in what was given reasoning behind the tweets. All the tweets are these. They're all these things that I just showed you. These are the tweets that they showed her. And uh, I put this here. It's a little bit It's a little bit black, but I put this here just to show that because the other one that I have is cut off. There are a lot of volunteers involved in working either directly or indirectly with every guest and panelist, and it isn't exactly fair for us to ask them this is something they're not comfortable with. This is quoting everything. This is a more difficult question, um, and all conventions are different. There's a lot for profit or larger conventions where things are departmentalized or paid with very different structures. Generally, the larger they get, the less they care about the drama, just to rule of thumb. That's why I don't, uh, I know you didn't like it, but we said you were not blacklisted. It's a very late into the planning process to try to accommodate. Oshi Live, for example, is doing robot rides for VTubers around the con, or there are other groups doing meet and greets for the tables directly on the iPads. There are also the element of volunteering that's different from normal work. That's a bit hard to explain since it's all unpaid. There are a lot of people who attach more of their own self uh, sense to the cause or an organization they're volunteering for, regardless of what it is. So even if they aren't directly uh, involved in it, you're the element of the organization doing something you disagree with. We hope you can grow into a place that are large enough to fully insulate people, but it's only our third year and it's growing difficult. Even at over 100 staff, we are understaffed. I'm currently at the hotel lead, external vendors, coordinators, product procurement, sponsor, co-lead, and logistics lead on top of being director, basically saying, just giving an example of the whole the whole scope. And then uh, she says, I'm pretty sure both WeebCon and YumaCon are smaller than Ofkai. Just using those as an example of how little I have spent at cons. Uh, I was under the impression that things have been set up for quite a while. We've been giving the okay to join the planning discord on May 1st, uh, and it only became an issue after that. I can understand some volunteers don't didn't know I would be there and dislike me, but I do not see this as a reason to this allow me to be on panel set. I agree with this, especially from the screenshots you have shown. I have done nothing wrong and said nothing hateful. You said there were more complaints besides the tweets, so I'm curious as what those were. This seems like people being petty, possibly the same people who didn't want Pippa to be there previously, but I'm easier to mark to get rid of since they don't have the backing of a company, much as a company that sponsored much, so much of Ofkai. Exactly. That's what a lot of people are saying, that uh, Pippa isn't liked, but Pippa is going because of the fact that uh, uh, Sakana has paid for so many things and Ofkai likes having sponsors. I'm not blaming Sakana. Sakana is not responsible for any of this. Remember, Sakana Face Connect has nothing to do with this. Do not harass Face Connect. Do not harass uh, Pippa. Do not harass anybody because they have nothing to do with this. This is all on Ofkai, 100%. People who had caused the issue with Pippa left us last year. So our attendance last year was 1853 people. And that's the last one we have here. We have other people saying, I don't want to come across as salty, but seeing Ofkai plus Kersha's story develop really makes me wonder. I was denied a panel despite my work with tons of creators and many prior to con experiences. I don't know. It just seems like things behind the scenes are Ofkai not so great. Grums is saying Woke have no problem gatekeeping when it comes to their own controlled spaces. They are gatekeeping Kersha right now. Uh, and also, you know, basically this one's saying about groupthink. Uh, they'll cry, kick and scream if they don't get their way. Infantile behavior. Instead of a discussion, it calls for silence. Instead of, hey, you do you it calls for silence yeah a lot of people call for silence no more silence because in truth there's nothing to fear it's fine to disagree with someone but you can do so in a respectful way you can mute uh what you don't want to see you can see less thanks to twitter to twitter curations you can do things to prevent things from like this from happening you can do things to prevent things like this from getting big and we have ref says desu who basically was going to be doing a uh, meet and greet and he says if this is going to be the way you're going to do it i don't want to do the meet and greet anymore you can blacklist me if you want i don't want to do the meet and greet with you guys here's one that i showed before saying you know they they, uh, they blacklisted kersha for what she's done and we're fine with marina vt which was a person who was doing a harassment campaign during the harry potter thing um during the you know the harry potter game thing the wizard game as people call it but yeah that's my take on it it wasn't a good idea 
Uh, they shouldn't have done this. I just wanted to give you guys all the information out there and see what you guys think now that you have every single piece of information. Now, moving on to all the bad mistakes that Niji Sanji has made uh, in ID and other places. It says uh, ID market not profitable. Of course, that's what they said. And they left ID market. Look at Akami, which is an ID person, I believe. Um, 22 million, 69,599. Kuzo has 1.7 million. But again, remember, he's a guy. And I think Akami is also a guy, I guess, in this case. That's why they put it there. Kobo directly with uh, Hyakuman Temera Salome, which is actually Hyakuman Temera has, has a lot of viewers. Hyakuman Temera is actually entertaining to watch. Hasn't gotten involved in any drama. So no, no bad things for her. Kuzo had just really got screwed over because of the whole ASAP collab thing uh, with uh, the uh, Wayne Di Sanji did that. But they have to work work and put effort into be successful. Easier to just dissolve the branch and pee off, like tick off a large market to open a competition. Especially when you had little, uh, the title being the biggest Japan lockdown. Salem is one of the biggest examples. Niji Sanji blanking itself for the sake of incompetence. When she got into the scene, she blew it away and was fast track growing at times faster than Gura. Only for Niji to never show proper support. They had their own Gura killer, so to speak, but ignored her. Yes, they did. She was really, really big. She grew big. She got like a million within like a month or something like that. She got a lot. ID is doing great. Michi's killing it. Hollow ID is killing it. I bet we get another ID sooner or later too. Hollow Life dominates Indonesia, partly because Hollow Life continues to invest in the branch. Nine members have official 3D models for one thing. Yeah, uh, another one. Uh, Salem has suffered from internal politics of the ways down in Nidhi Sanji. She angered some of the old guard by becoming so popular so quickly. There's a feeling of how dare you leaping uh, above all of us. We're your senpai. She basically radioactive until her popularity crashed and then was considered okay to collab with. And that really sucks. That type of internal politics really sucks. It can destroy any kind of growth and it can destroy any kind of desire you have to grow. Aka Virtual really gains success in ID, male VTuber market. Not just Akami, so Akami is male. Uh, becoming the most uh, subbed male VTuber. But Harris Kane, also be CCV, really high among ID males. Average 2K+, plus, basically ID version of Vox. Kind of want to howl out to debut Hollow Stars ID too. ID is the fourth most populated country in the world. If Niji did invest market wisely, it would have been extremely profitable. And I know uh, Hollow Life did. Uh, Mordeke goes against their biggest shareholder and CEO Riku Tazumi's GRQ Get Rich Quick scheme. Uh, stock price fluctuations first and only priority reflects in the shareholders profile as well. Any color shareholders would be attracted to the short selling price while cover shareholders would be more for the stock dividends that benefit longer term holders. Private agencies uh, have put more attention into their talents and signed up with their reputation and fame. ID market would be more receptive to the latter two kinds of agencies after Niji IDs collapse. So yeah, they're going to be collapsing kind of badly. And we're going to the V stats just to show the kind of collapse that they've been having recently. Um, this actually, for mid-May, they're actually doing pretty well. Nidhi Sanji as a, a, in, on the JP side is doing pretty well, plus 29% uh, of hours-wise. Nidhi Sanji EN is down 44% hours-wise for mid-May. It's basically, it's, it's basically a, uh, like, as of right now, May type of thing. Hollow Live JP is only up 1%. Hollow Live English is up 41%. Neoporte is down 31%. Um, Hollow Live uh, device, I guess, is this bottom one here, um, is down uh, 1.56. Uh, no, device is doing good. This other one, this other project down here is uh, kind of lowering. There are some ups and downs that they're always going to be. Um, it's as if Hollow Live stealing views from Niji Sanji. Niji N's 500k is crazy. Source link. And of course, everyone wants a source. It's just not everyone reads JP. The column label reads roughly as rank, brand name, total viewing time, that type of thing. This is the source here. And um, these are the top livers, uh, the top hours here. Niji Sanji looks like it had top hours uh, so far. Then you have uh, Chloe and, you know, other people like Pekora. You have Kuzuha. It depends. It's the streams. These are the streams. These are specific streams. Amane Kanata. Samane Kanata. The specific streams and the amount of hours they're getting. These are the specific VTubers and the amount of hours they're getting. So, you know, on the top 10, you do have some Niji Sanji. You only have two people Niji Sanji, actually. The rest are Hololive or other companies. Here you have, um, my guess is, this is, you know, other VStats here. All the VStats that are happening here. It's, it's insane, all the, all the kind of stuff that VStats has. But yeah, pretty much, uh, you know, CCV, stream time, stream, streams, greater than 10,000. What's the third one? It's Vispo. Vispo is the third one. Um, here we have another CCV issue that they're having right now. 200k plus views, 150k average CCV, but only $96 in super chat. Something smells fishy here. Um, and here we go. Only $96, uh, super chats of shall we dance here. Uh, not sure how that happened. Not sure why that happened. It seems kind of strange. Um, they're saying it's botted. I don't think it's botted. Sometimes people just don't give and that's fine. Not everyone's going to be shelling out every single time. Sometimes people lurk and then they just don't shell out. 
uh, of course, for Nidhi Sanji, that's really is painful because they're not going to get money. And also the livers aren't going to get money. So that's even more painful since they don't have any kind of basic pay. So this is really bad. I don't like that this is happening because it's really bad. This little peak there is what they were looking at. Um, corporate needs you to find the difference between the picture and that picture. They're the same picture. Uh, Nidhi Sisters ran out of money for Super Chats. It could very well be that they just ran out of money. Some people do that. Uh, this type of thing, I don't know what's going on there. Some people are going to say it's botting. Some people are going to say whatever. Uh, Miko played Fallout. That's 100% going to watch the later list. Yeah, she did play Fallout 76. Data is entirely is definitely wrong. I was watching the stream full of super chats. I wonder why that site is showing the wrong data. And here's the thing: you always have to look at everything. Luckily, someone actually took a look. Man, see, they were, if this is the one that they're talking about, they were getting hundred dollars. They were getting hundred dollar plus super chats. So they're getting a lot of super chats. It's good to look at all the information. Probably just error in the system because there ain't no way 150k CCV only gets 96. So funny coincidence. Uh, v stats uh, only likes this like shown. Hololizer from uh, SC Playboard. Um, v stats. So taking a look at everything. Playboard has 3,700 yen. Uh, Hololizer has 3,700 yen. This one has 96 bucks according to this. There's something wrong here, because according to what is being shown here, there is a lot of super chats. So. It's probably more like maybe 900, maybe a thousand. And I think that's probably better said. Live analytics graph shows the views of 6,000 in super chats, only recorded time window. Something glitched on YouTube. So there's $6,000 in super chats. That's a correction. That's why I like looking at everything as it goes on. Because luckily, people actually look at information. And yes, there is $6,000 in super chats there. Uh, but a glitch made it look really worse. Moving on to made mint slash not pomu. Uh, it look, looks like this cute maid got a new maid cafe, and this is the maid cafe here. This is them basically doing it there. Oh, she popping up. She popping up. She got a design with the movement in the background. The color, you know, all, all the, the little ghosties in the background is really cute. She's got a new place for her play button. Maximum comfy cafe. Cute stage, wisps, play button. Everything is cute. Like, everything is back there. Got the play button back there and the wall. You got everything. It looks really, really nice. This is Peak. I hope she finds stable grip to vibe with for streams. Make her stronger. Now, I know when she came back, she was very unsure what she was going to do. Only confirmed she'd be around at least to the end of summer. But I think we can start saying she was going to be haunted for a while. Congrats to Maid Mint. Absolutely. She's finding her space. She's finding her place to enjoy herself. And I'm really, really happy that she has that. Official screenshots from Hollow Live Meet in Taipei. The official screenshots are from Bay. That actually rhymes. I'm sorry. Sorry I did that. Uh, Iris and I will be sailing into our happy day ever after for now. They did a, you know, basically a duet there. They were doing concert. They basically had it, uh, their 3D concert. Uh, basically had like a live 2D concert in, you know, the way they did it. So... They had it with their 3D avatars, which was interesting. It's an interesting way of doing things. Um, we had a great time. Thank you, Bayris. Other people putting there, you know, they had the big screen where they were doing karaoke. So, okay, now we can say that both of them, now we can say that both of them are a glorified karaoke. Just being uh, fair here. I think it's because it's a smaller venue. Just being fair here. I honestly thought they were going to do a 3D concert, but no, they did it live 2D. They had, you know, two side ones there, but they did pretty much live 2D. With a little bit of 3D mixed in here with, I guess, you know, not augmented reality, but, you know, um, they're on their 3D stage with actual dancing and things like that. So they went a little bit further than what V Rhapsody did. But um, they still had some moments where it was just live 2D, a glorified karaoke. Uh, I guess all the agencies do that when they are doing it at a place like... Uh, no, Taipei, Taiwan, places like that. Not a concert, by the way. Man, it sure looks like one. Holler really killing it everywhere. That venue uh, is nuts, too. I can only imagine how fun it must have been. Yeah, it's technically... I guess they're doing it this way because it's technically not a concert for them. It's technically just like a a, a little meet and greet because it's, it's a hollow live meet. So it's not a concert, technically. It's like a, a meet and greet type of thing for them. Like a whole meet your, your Oshis type of thing. So it's a weird thing. It says, hollow meet Taipei, not a concert. They refuse to call this a concert, yet this is how it's being hosted at Taipei con uh, Concert Hall Music Center. Uh, please note the event starts at 6 p.m., this is just 5 p.m. People queuing outside to come in. All tickets were sold at level 2. There's a seat in level 3 as well. I look back to the Needy concert in Singapore. Yeah, because the, the V Rhapsody was actually called a concert. This one is called just an event, just like a meet, a Hollow Live meet event. Give us an update on how it went through. This is how some of the pictures are. You know, they, they did do some kind of like, you know, 
chatting thing and you know have a, have a big event basically the reason why they probably did it in that place is because they knew that there were going to be a lot of people showing up so instead of doing it in a small uh center where apparently you, you would have like just a room they decided to do it in a bigger hall because they knew that they were going to have a lot of people but still you can still criticize them for having the live 2d thing if you want it is it is a a uh, okay criticism um and you know people lining up outside it's very popular compared to what v rap city just went through even just as a meet and they have even a little truck that has you know visuals out there and here's the trucks that have the visuals just to show you a little bit more people queuing out there uh trucks that have the visuals for you know merch and things like that um it was a small meet according to them but they uh, honestly had a lot of things it was kind of like a a mini hollow fest i guess for uh for the Taipei area, but you're going to hear people criticizing because of the fact that it was Life 2D. Uh, it's just legit to say that a lot of it was Life 2D, but it was a, it was not a concert. It was not marked as a concert. It was not marketed as a concert. It was just as like a hollow meet, whatever that is for them. So just want to let you guys know about this. Some breaking news, Idol Corp, Idol Yen, Idol itself has sponsored Doki for uh, the official debut of their new group, which is a massive W for her. Uh, watch Encore debut today with Doki Bird on her Twitch channel, debuting at 2 p.m. PST. So, uh, Idol does this for the new debut since EN1. It's good that Doki's part of that, but it's not a significant hurdle for someone her size. I mean, it's just good confirmation that she's not being blacklisted from Idol. I don't think she ever would be blacklisted from Idol, to be honest with you. She wouldn't be. Uh, that's, I think that's what these people are going to say. To assume two Idol members a few weeks ago, she was already on good terms with Idol. Uh, while Idol isn't as bad, bad as Niji Sanji, some of their PR stunts and management have been questionable lately. Latest drama they have is manager staff who forgot or refused to pay an artist in Indonesia, and the person had to contact CEO directly in order to get paid. Won't comment too much on their CEO playing around with Niji drama in order to push his company's image. Just hope dude won't get in, uh, won't be like these billionaires who think they know better than everyone else. I mean, you never know. You never know how it's going to be. Also about their company, uh, Idol CEO tries to be based, but their recent issues take away quite a bit from it. At least he tries to be noticeable towards improving the situation for their talents, unlike other companies who choose to double down and place iron curtains. Yes, uh, Avil, the person who is the uh, the CEO, of course he's going to try to use bad publicity from other companies to bring good publicity to them. That is what people do. That is what people will continue doing. That is what you do as PR. Uh, good PR is doing that. To say having their watch the debut streams live or watch the video showcasing them, it's the, the, the view streams live. It's basically a whole watch along of all their debuts. On that note, what's the conversion rate of PST to WIB? Uh, her announcement is 4 p.m. PST, so I guess it'll be just watching one of the debuts. Maybe she made a little mistake in her calendar, move her announcement stream a couple of hours later. I uh, thought Doki joined Idol. That would be weird that she joined Idol, but yeah, that would be weird. Um, nothing against the Idol, but it, she's just good doing its things on her own. And I'm happy for her doing that. And of course, I'm showing this right here because Doki's Marvel Rivals stream introduced us to Doki Loki Bird. Uh, that's the Marvel's rivals that they had for Doki Bird. Something about Doki being Loki is less fitting, not MCU Loki, but mythology Loki. Uh, Feels fitting. It feels fitting. Uh, I like the feeling of negligible uh, stream from Riku was all due to future sponsor suddenly cut ties with Kurosanji of Doki Termination. Yeah, this is good. It's good that, that she has her own little Marvel thing too. Uh, Elinor will leave ARP to become independent. She was doxxed when she left Wachter, aka NGES. Yes, um, this person is going to be leaving their next company and that's sad. This is, you know, uh, independent VTuber news. Repost because of the damn autocorrect. Translation, hello, I'm Eileen or Eileen Noir. Today, Eileen would like to inform you of the decision that she has made between Eileen and the Algorithm Project, uh, which is Eileen is resigning from being a VTuber artist under the project. And from now on, Eileen will continue to be to her journey as an independent VTuber. Announcement has been issued with the approval of Algorithm Project. Thank you so much for everything that has been lovely and lovely companion, warm community. Thank you very much for your support consistently from everyone. Uh, why Wachter was called Neji ES? Because, of course, they left... Um, it was really bad. It was like really bad. It was doxing. It was, uh, you know, harassment. It was a bunch of bad things. Guy wanted to make a harem pretty much. It was really insane. Um, she got doxed directly by Wachter. If you don't mind, here's a statement from the agency themselves. There's their statement about the Eileen Noir thing. Um, it says, leading up to this, April 18th, were accusations against the two mentioned in this announcement. Accusation involved cheating and misconduct, grooming of fans, including minor fans. And April 22nd, ARP issued a statement about suspending the two while they were investigating. The two being, um, you know, the people that were mentioned here. April 24th, the second statement came out asking people to not speculate or spreading unconfirmed information because the people started discussing if other talents are involved. As far as we know, none of the other talents are involved. As fast forward to today, May 11th, is what we get so far. I think they've been rather professional at handling this so far, but this just happened. I'll keep an eye on it to how they're handling going forward, both the talents involved and the agency. 
Keep in mind that currently from our position as outsiders, we have no way to verify any of this information. Very true. They said right here, uh, about Aline and Mai, we would like to thank everyone supporting the algorithm project and the artists throughout. We're sorry to inform you that Aline has, okay, that's a, that's a bad uh, translation, is going away. Artists under algorithm project, artists express the intention to leave the agency on their own. The company therefore considers the stability and uh, suitability and respect artist's decision. The artists will continue their activities as independent VTuber. Algorithm Project would like to thank Eileen Noir for traveling with us uh, with every success in the chosen path. Okay, so my Ruka, which was the one that did cheating and uh, supposedly um, embezzlement and all that type of stuff. Company has decided to relieve her from being an internal employee. Company since May 1st, 2024, due to fading performing duties, which caused the company to suffer damage. On behalf of Algorithm Project, we sincerely apologize for the incident and the discomfort that has occurred. We'd like to strive to create good work and bring happiness in everyone. Of course, all these things are alleged. All the allegations are just rumors everyone will support artists who continues their activities so yeah the my one was supposedly it was it was a rumor cheating on all that kind of stuff and just misuse of company funds that type of thing so i hope the best for both of them especially Ellie noir who just wants to move on so here we go uh this is a titanic meme this is a meme i imagine if vivi is rose one of their fans it's jack and his sister's trying to hold on to the ship and the titanic is riku's yacht so there's a titanic of course this is the sinking portion of the titanic movie um, about, you know, Jack and them sinking and doing all that. And this being Riku's yacht, of course. And that's, that's Vivi trying to hold on with the little money that they give her. As we saw, the little money uh, really, really, really sucked. The fact that she's not getting as much money as she deserves. Because, of course, Nidhi Sanji only gives you based on the super chats you get. You don't get a base salary like you do with Hololive. Hololive gives you a base salary. These people do not. And it says right here, which one will be taking the most L's at the end of the year? Uh, Sony uh, uh, have brought perfect of their pony to their potential basically you know sony nidhi sanji or uh these other people here or crunchy roll i think is in this case um sorry sony and mental gymnastics is far worse than nidhi sanji because at least nidhi's blamed for favoritism and pro work culture f sony's excuse for removing their products from 177 countries because they removed ghost of tsushima from all these countries and yeah that's that's a little bit of a short meme time for you that is all for right now of course comment like and subscribe down below thank you for being here of course i love having the conversations with you guys i love having these things with you guys and i do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment take a look at my description for my socials there's a discord there's twitter there's other places that you can check me out twitch etc and also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy thank you